so that then brings me to the time where I'm going to ask Tracy to um, share her screen or talk to us first, whichever she wants to do, and do us a lovely presentation and help declutter, I'm hoping our minds as well as our lives. Okay, so I'm Tracy, and my business is The Lifestyle Concept, which I set up in 2017. Um, I believe decluttering is a very good way to help you achieve inner harmony. In this short presentation, I'm just going to share some of the sort of facts about decluttering, and then also share with you some stories from clients and um, who I've helped. So... <laughs> I never thought in the year 2020 I'd be offering this service, but I think like a lot of you, um, I think a lot of women in particular, we talk about journeys, don't we? I think we talk about, you know, when we've gone through the menopause and we've had major life changes and how your life leads you from one thing to another. Um, but in 2017, I set up the business and it seems now that decluttering has become more than just a fashion statement, you know, just more than a new thing. It is actually a way of living a, living a new style of life. Um, it's very much something I love as well. I'm very passionate about. Um, in fact, when I was about 10 years of age, um, I used to go up to my bedroom every Saturday to clean it. And um, what my mother didn't realize was I would spend many hours <laughs> decluttering. Um, so I used to run up, quickly dust and, and hoover and polish and everything, and then literally go to my wardrobe of clothes. I remember only at a young age and literally just take everything out, tidy it all up and rearrange it, tidy out all my makeup. Um, and yeah, it was always something that I just basically love to do and it's been very much part of my life. Um, being a PA as well, I've worked for various uh, bosses, so it's been very, very much part of me. So as I say, from the age of 18, I've worked as a PA office manager and I've helped some pretty disorganized people stay on life, um, on top of life. And um, particularly I find um, I've worked for a lot of uh, solicitors and uh, lawyers and um, you know, my biggest challenge was always trying to find um, a missing file in amongst all the files that they seem to have on their desk. So it's been an, an interesting life. Um, and I've also always really liked order um, and have found that um, I tend to have a very quick, um, what we're called like fast brain. So uh, that's not a, an arrogant thing to say, it's just a, a terminology. So basically I have many, many thoughts and I find that by having a sense of order and having a decluttered environment, it does actually keep me quite calm as well. So in later years, I used decluttering as a way of um, more, less about really possessions, but more about really letting go. And in 2014, I made a conscious decision to declutter every element of my life and um, that included finishing my relationship with my husband, which sounds, I don't want to trivialize, you know, a breakup and a, calling it a declutter, but I hadn't been happy for a very long time, amount of time. So it was a very big decision really to just sort of, you know, make that decision to um, let go of everything and really become more like the person I was um, when I was, you know, much longer, younger. Um, the reason I like decluttering is, and why I like to help people is, I believe that many people struggle with both mental and, and physical health, and the two are intrinsically linked. Um, and every magazine you pick up now and every blog site you visit talks about the benefits of decluttering. And as I said earlier, it's much more than um, a fashion phase. It's more about wanting to stop living in the past and move on to the future. And one of your ladies just, just mentioned that about letting go of the past. It's very relevant to what I do, helping people. But you've only got to look at this change of housing now, and there is a movement to a more wet, minimalist, minimalist way of living. I don't know if you look around you now, and the style of properties that are being built, um, not just in this area, but in London, a lot of people are downsizing to apartments, not necessarily because they, you know, because of monetary reasons, but just literally because they want to um, stream their lives and have a more simplified life. Um, and a lot of properties down here I've noticed are being knocked down, very stylized, very gray, very black, you know, black and white, and just moving towards a more minimal style of living. A lot of charity shops, particularly at the beginning of this year, couldn't cope with the amount of items um, and they were actually not being able to take any more items. So it just shows that people are decluttering. And I think during lockdown, you're gonna probably find that a lot of people have been doing that as well. I think as well, we all care about the environment, which means that we want to buy less stuff. Um, and that's becoming more and more apparent. And I think again, during this lockdown, I think of many people I've spoken to, we've all just taken a real appreciation of the environment. And it's less been about, you know, going out and having a jolly good shop. It's been more about the environment that we live in and caring about that and having a more streamlined life. 
for any of you that are interested, there's a couple of guys in America called The Minimalists. They're based out of LA and they talk about decluttering very much as I do. It's not just about the physical, it's the mental as well. There's no, there's nothing, no part of your life that can't be decluttered if you wish it to be. So why is it so good? <clears throat> um, I believe it stops you falling into overwhelm and helps you keep a healthy balance of life. It's great for mindfulness and being in the moment as well. So it certainly gives you a sense of calm. It makes your life easier. No more lost stuff, everything in its place and a place for everything. And no more trying to find clothes lying on the bottom of your cupboard. I'm sure you've been there. Um, when I talk about this presentation, by the way, it's not like I haven't been there in elements of my life. I'm an absolute clothes lover. <laughs> and there was a time that I couldn't even remember what I had. And I used to go out and buy the same cream blouse, not the same, but just something similar. Um, and I realized I had a sort of an issue and had to get that sorted. And um, it also changes the energy of your home as well. and makes it just feel, feel fresher and brighter. Um, a freer, calmer home space means you can invite friends around. I work with a lot of clients that have spare rooms that are just so decluttered, they're embarrassed to, to bring friends around. And they said they'd love to just have a room where they can invite around friends, friends around to stay. Um, so having that sense of space gives you a sense of freedom as well. And also you're in charge of your home, not the other way around. I work with a lot of clients that are just so, you know, they've either got their own businesses, they've got children, they've got families, etc. And they feel that their home is just taking over because they just can't find anything and it feels really overwhelming. In fact, I'm working with a client at the moment and she says that when she comes into her house, she just feels incredibly anxious. She just wants to turn around and turn back out again. So we're working on a long-term project to, to free her of that. Of course, it can help you release money as well. You know, a lot of uh, clients I'm doing this for, and now at the moment, I'm selling items. One of my clients, I'm selling clothes through for her. Um, and I've made her quite a bit of money, actually. And it's, it's clothing, literally. She just had in trunks. Um, she had in the garden in a lockup. Um, so, and I think um, for some people where money is an issue, um, it is a case. It is like, you know, what is it? Um, uh, what is it? Cash in the attic. It is a bit like that, but you'd be surprised. I remember many, many years ago, uh, well before my father passed away, he had a Hornby model train set in his attic. And I'd been watching Antiques Roadshow one day and I pop footed it down to Cornwall and I said, Dad, get the Hornby train set out of the attic. And actually it was worth over £500, but had he left it one more year, it would have rusted away. So it was quite a, you know, he was quite surprised himself really. So why do people have clutter? Um, and this is where I think the empathy side is very important. And I am, um, em you know, very empathetic because it's not a case as someone said to me, um, oh, that's easy what you do, go in with a bin liner and a skip. And it's like, no, I don't. Because I appreciate that pe there's a reason why people, have, you know, are in this situation. For some, it's memories of the past maybe a bereavement. I work with a lot of clients that have lost a husband or a parent and they're still holding on to those parents' possessions, the husband's possessions, and it's hard for them to let go. A fear of letting go of items. I was working with a client recently and she doesn't hoard anymore, but she went through a phase of hoarding and I said to her, why do you think that was? And she said, at the time I had so little money I perceived that everything I had had value. And so I couldn't bring myself to let it go, even though it was holding me back. But eventually she realized that a lot of the stuff didn't actually have any value and she was able to send it to a charity shop. Childhood issues as well. <clears throat> as I touched on mine without sharing too much, I had a pretty uh, tricky upbringing. And um, in a way though, I feel blessed because my issues from childhood and the way I was raised made me the person I am today because going up to my bedroom, finding that sense of calm and not in a, an extreme OCD way, it just literally made me feel very, very calm going up to my bedroom and being able to have a sense of order in what was probably quite a chaotic life. But for some of my clients, um, childhood issues play a part. It could be unresolved relationships from the past with parents or brothers, sisters, etc. And again, I mean, you know, with, with, with not letting go, it's all about fearing to be out of control so it's about really in some ways you have to go quite deep with people and let them understand why why they're still holding and why it's time to let go being brought up in a chaotic household it can be just as, as regular as that you know um if you've come been brought up in that kind of environment you 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 mirror what your you know your parents were environments were 
I work with a lot of clients that have got ADHD and I've been working with one recently. Um, she actually has chronic um, fatigue as well and um, systemic candida. So she's in quite a bad way, but she's, she's a lovely, lovely lady. And um, with her, her ADHD, just being diagnosed at the age of, the age of 52, um, playing a massive part in her life. So although she doesn't like the clutter, she doesn't have the ability to let go and she gets quite anxious if things are removed from her peripheral vision. So it's quite a, a big learning for me actually. Um, and as you, as you know, in any, any environment, we all learn, don't we, as we go along in the job. So <clears throat> there's more science behind this stuff as well. So decluttering has been shown as a very solid way to help with anxiety and stress. Um, and income and financial worries are high, risk high on the UK's list of stressors. Um, so a lot of people impulsive buy. I know in the past I used to literally fill down and go out and have a good old spend up. The ladies in the boutique in Ealing where I used to live, I'm sure they used to literally put the kettle on <laughs> or pour me a glass of champagne, rub their hands in glee. And they always had a dress for me. It was really interesting that, wasn't it? The minute I came in, Tracy, we've got this lovely dress. And of course I was always going to buy it. Um, but I think all of us have done that in times and I know there's a, and I'm a big fan of the high street and I still like to spend money, but I think a lot of us probably over the years have probably spent more money on things that we don't really, really need. And I think if it really is costing you and affecting you, it really is a look, a look really to how you can streamline that and not keep spending on the same item. Um, and as I touched on before, chronic disorganization can be symptoms of bigger problems such as depression, anxiety order, obsessive compulsive disorders. Um, again, they're going to make hoarding, I believe, um, I need to check this, um, a, a mental health uh, condition on its own. But hoarding, in my estimation, always comes from um, a background of, like, like I said, of either, you know, depression or anxiety orders, obsessive compulsive as well. A lot of clients don't want to let go of things because they just feel they've got to touch it so many times, etc. So this is the world that I'm just getting into at the moment, actually. I'm just hopefully going to be working with the charity where a lot of their clients have issues like this. So it's going to be a whole, whole new world for me, which I'm looking forward to taking on. Um, Interestingly as well, um, decluttering can improve your sleep and I know I was very guilty of this and so um, many years ago, um, particularly in 2014 and probably to 2016, um, when I was really going through my um, darker period, I suppose you could call it, when I'm kind of heading, I'm in the cloud and I'm kind of coming out the other side. But I used to spend so much time on social media and I used to go to bed with my phone and be like literally lying in my bed at 12 and, you know, one o'clock in the morning. And one of my best pieces of advice is that, you know, I don't know if you realize this, but, you know, our brains still process the external stimulus. So if you've any of you have got your, you know, your computer in your bedroom, you know, lots of technology, lots of energy going around, please, if you can, take it out and then with your phone, put it in another room. I don't have my phone in my bedroom now. It's literally strictly forbidden. And I have it outside because otherwise I'll be there until 12, 1 o'clock in the morning because your brain just doesn't have a chance to close down. And obviously it's very important for us to have good sleep. Um, so with a lot of my clients, I try and create a more welcome um, I think I think when I go to my clients I always ask them what's the room that makes you feel the most stressed and for a lot of them it's often their bedroom and I think the bedroom should be your most calm place you know where you can go it feels lovely you get into your lovely warm bed everything's really calming so you can really have a good night's sleep and not feel in, in overwhelm and there's no doubt about it having an organized home can contribute to a better healthier life and I think with um, the situation that we found ourselves in, there's been a real emphasis, hasn't there, on cleanliness. Um, and I think um, it'll be interesting to see really how many people have decluttered and realize that the less stuff you have, the easier it is to clean and keep everything clean. Um, and it also shows increases your productivity as well. Just recently, I shared on LinkedIn some photos of my own apartment. Um, some of you went to my apartment before I decluttered, and I never would have said it was overly cluttered, but I used to feel quite um, a little bit disorganized, I suppose, really, because I used to work from my dining table, and I didn't actually have a proper office desk. 
and I didn't, my, off, my place wasn't really what I would call zoned. So what I've done is zoned my apartment now. Um, it is a two bedroom apartment, but I've got one great big living area. But now when I'm, I'm talking to you now from my desk and I feel like I'm in work mode. Whereas when I was working from my dining room before, it was like, am I eating my dinner or am I, <laughs> or am I on my laptop? So things like that are really interesting. And I definitely know that I've been much more productive as well since I've done that. Um, so if you're working from home particularly, and I'm going to, um, been working with a lot of people that work from home, and so I have been helping them with their workspace, um, trying to transition from a bedroom space into a workspace, um, and also help them with any sort of office filing solutions. I've got a very small filing cabinet. I try and keep it as minimalist as possible um, and keep everything quite neat and tidy. Um, I'm a great one for light and bright and spacious. I just think it helps us breathe. You know, think when you go outside and you're by the sea and how you feel. It's just, you know, how lucky have we been to be in this area, you know, down in the southwest during this time because you step outside and it's just so lovely and warm and welcoming. So um, I think that, you know, that should be in your home as well. So I'm a great one for opening up the blinds, et cetera, and bringing the light in. And of course, if your house is in a mess, it can cause a lot of wasted hours. Um, I know, again, in times of overwhelm, I'm the classic, where have I put my purse, where have I put my phone, where's my keys, and I've run around for more times than I can remember. But now I have a special place where everything gets kept, which is my keys, my phone, and I know that I just go there to them. So with my clients, I help them find those special places, if you like, where they can find everything. Um, I think it gives you a sense of confidence as well, because you just have a bit more of an improved clarity um, and you have more free time in your daily schedule and you're not surrounded by clutter, you just actually eat better as well. I find now, going back to what I was saying to you about the, the desk in the um, dining room, when I sit at my dining table now, it's my dining table and therefore I appreciate the food. A bit like Vernon was saying about food. I mean, I've, I've grown to love my food. I buy locally from a little independent fruit and veg place and I sit and eat my food now with such purpose and intention. Whereas before it was grab, 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 quickly go on the laptop. So my life is, has changed in that way and I'm eating a lot better for it. And I believe that sorting and letting go of the old and necessary can make room for the new because we're all, um, if any of you are like me, you know, I can never hands up. I'm never going to say I'm never going to buy another dress again because that's, that's just not going to happen. So um, I constantly declutter. Um, I quite often go to my wardrobe almost on a monthly basis and I go through and I just kind of hold things up and I think, mm, not so sure. And I normally stick it on marketplace and sell it through. Um, so yeah, so plus it can actually lift your mood and um, it can make you feel happier. Um, and so how do you start decluttering? So I think it's important that you focus on what you want your new decluttered life to look like and creating a vision board um, is a great way to do it. If you're looking at decluttering your home, you can um, get details from Rightmove or any of the online sites. Um, I worked with one client, she just literally had one picture of a really beautiful minimalist house and it really, she, we had that as her benchmark, if you like, where she wanted to be. Um, but if, if you want to declutter every element, element of your life from your, you know, your mental health, um, your physical health, you know, I, I'm a great one, a vision board. I've actually got a vision book um, and I actually put in there everything, the way I want to be, um, the things I want to have, have done aesthetically, hairstyles, um, mentally, visions of, of who I am and who I want to be. Um, I, I put everything in there. The man that I want to attract in my life. <laughs> um, every single bit of detail. So everything can be decluttered and everything can be focused on. But I think it's bringing that focus. When you find yourself in an overwhelm, it's really difficult to know where to start. So I think that bring, I've, I'm a big fan of vision boards, dream boards, whatever you want to call them. As I say, I've done mine in the book. And you could literally break down every element of your life. It's your relationship. Do you want to repair your relationship or is it time to move on? If you're looking for a new fella, who is he? Who is he? What does he look like? Who is he? What's he going to give to you? How's your home going to look? How do you want your living room to look, your bedroom? So use visuals. We, we are... Hum, human beings that love visuals, we take seconds, 10 seconds to make a judgment about someone based or anyone or anything based on, a, on our visual and it takes 10 seconds. So visuals are very, very important. 
If you've got a lot to take, get rid of. Con don't concentrate on what you want to get rid of. Focus on the things that you want to keep. I find with a lot of my clients, they get very, very anxious because they have memories from the past, family, friends, loved ones. And they, I think, sometimes think I'm going to come in and we're going to tackle that. And I always say, no, no, no. Let's tackle the stuff that's easier, first of all. And look at every item. I know Marie Kondo has made this very popular, um, but there's a lot of us declutterers who've been around a long time before her. But it's interesting. Um, I, I'm more about the mental declutter and helping my clients with that, really. But of course, the physical. And it is a case of looking at each item and say, does it make me happy? Now, I know that's a really hard one. Because, for instance, and I'll give you um, some stories. So I worked with one client and she'd lost her husband. And her house was like um, a shrine to him, really. And every photo was there. Everything was there. But as we looked around, she wasn't really in a very happy space. And I said to her, how about we just take the three best photos, not the 15 or the 20 photos you've got, the three really, really lovely ones that when you look at them, they spark such beautiful memories. There you were on holiday here or whatever. And then you frame them in a really lovely way. And of course they're there, they're in your heart and in your mind and in your, you know, within you anyway, but they've got this physical reminder without this constant, because I think some, it can tip over to, to, to making you quite depressed. You've got like, you know, it's like me with my marriage, you know, I've had spent a long time getting over that. It would be really weird therefore if I still had my wedding photos out for something. So what I've done with my wedding photos is I, got a beautiful box, HomeSense do amazing boxes. I looked at every single photo at my wedding day. I smiled, I laughed, I had a really good cry. I literally, you know, lots of tears, looked at my hairstyle, laughed at that, my dress, and I put them all in this beautiful box and I kind of went, bye-bye. And I've sealed it all up, big ribbon. I won't look at them anymore, there's no point. I don't want to live in the past. I'm now me looking towards the future. But they're stored in a lovely place. They're not chucked in some room. They're not thrown away. They're still there. They're still part of my life. And you, the same can be said of any memories that you've got. Loved ones, bereaved parents, etc. And the same with my dad. I've got a little lovely little box of all his mementos and, and knickknacks and things. Passport photos from when he was young. Some really young photos of him. Every now and then I go in, but they're, they're kept in a really special place that they, I, could, I can look at them, but they don't hold me back from where I'm going now. And it, so it is a case really of looking around you and saying, does it make me happy? Um, giving to charity is one of the best ways that you can um, let go. And I can't recommend it enough, but I think I work with a lot of clients and I think I've, this is where I've had to kind of go, no. Oh, I don't know where, I don't care where it goes, you know, get rid of it. And I say, no, no, no. What charity means the world to you? Now, I know for me, my dad, he had heart issues and he had cancer. So I always give to cancer and I always give to heart issues. Um, but I always ask my clients, what, what charity would you feel? And I think in terms of your, you and your decluttering, what would you, what's, what's the dearest to you that when you take it in, you feel fantastic giving them the stuff as well? Um, I'm passionate about this. I don't know if you saw Mary Portis many years ago. I love that woman. And she talked about this. Um, don't take things into charity that are broken or useless, that you don't like, that are discarded, dirty. It's, it's almost a bit, I find it a little bit, not that cool really to go in. And I think with some clients, you know, they've, oh, that can go to charity. And I'm like, no, it can't. <laughs> because if you don't want it, and how, what are they supposed to do with it? And they spend so much time, I think, sometimes going through. I was working, talking to one charity one time. They said the amount of stuff they get uh, brought in. So it's really nice if you've taken some quite nice stuff into them. Start small, draw by draw. Um, I think a lot of people say, oh, I want to take on the whole thing. I want to do the whole thing. But don't overwhelm yourself. Believe me, it's very, very tiring. It's a lot more tiring than you would ever imagine. And I normally say three hours is what I normally give to my clients maximum. I find by then we're both tired. We've worked through things. Um, for some clients, as I say, it could be start it's all for yourself. It could be starting by a draw or... Um, you know, taking a slightly bigger area. For any of those that are having, wanting to have one-to-ones with me, I am offering a 45 minute complimentary session. I've got a step-by-step -step guide to decluttering, so I'm happy to share that with you. 
and, and incorporate decluttering into your daily routine. I think that's the thing. It's all very well me coming in or you taking on a decluttering project and you go, right, I'm done, I'm sorted, it's all perfect. But how are you going to keep it like that? My biggest advice is constantly declutter, you know, constantly declutter. It's almost becomes part of your new way of living. So like, for instance, if I go now and I go and get myself a saucepan and I look at the saucepan and I think, oh, that's all stained and can I get that cleaned? What's a bit battered? It goes. It's not a case of, oh, I'll keep it for a while. I'll have a think about it. It's like gone, replace, or you try and repair it. Um, so I think that's very important. And acknowledge your limitations. You know, it's, it's, I say, it is a very tiring process. Don't start just chucking things away. You'll come to regret that. Um, I worked with one client and she was just completely chucking things away and I felt very uncomfortable to be fair taking her stuff away because like, the last thing you want to do is go oh I just chucked out this or that or the other um, look at your items and keep things that look lovely you know everything that because to me it's about valuing yourself as well so if you value yourself you value everything that's around you so anything that's damaged etc can be disposed of. Um, I know the tips have been closed, haven't they? Because that many people have been getting rid of things, but I think they're probably back to normals hopefully soon. Um, fresh air and bright light are great. And I'm a great fan of music as well. If music's your thing, it just diffuses any of the energy and just keeps it nice and light so you just don't feel overwhelmed. Prepare a list of what needs to be decluttered or which rooms, which rooms you want to work on. Um, and to, to cluster the list in easy to hardest first. So clear, clothing is normally the easiest to let go, but then need the central mental items to last. Get rid of items you never use, or items that are easy to get rid of. Um, um, give away to friends and family if you think there's anyone that would benefit. And I'm a great fan, I say, of charity shops. Also Marketplace on Facebook, I cannot recommend that enough. I wouldn't normally recommend anything that particularly attached to any sort of big organization, but um, I, find, I find Marketplace, you can sell things through very, very easily. You put a good price on it and people come knocking at your door, which is great. And once you're done, once you've got that space, um, you can paint your home, nice fresh colors. I'm a great fan of having flowers in your home. Ikea is great for storage solutions. I can't think of a better place. They've got everything to suit everyone's budget through to full-size units, um, through to um, boxes, very colorful boxes to put things away as well. I think some of their boxes are only like five pound a box and you assemble them, very, very pretty. I'm a big fan of HomeSense as well, though they've got some really lovely creative boxes if that's more your thing. Um, Keep your blinds and curtains open. I know that sounds, I'm talking to people here that probably will do that anyway, but I work with a lot of my clients. They get to clutter, they get depressed, the blinds come down, the room never sees the light. And I, one of the first things I do is blinds up, windows open, let's get some fresh air in and just create a different energy. As I said, cheerful music. I'm a great one for candles as well, um, better than plugins or a diffuser as well. And it just keeps that space nice and fresh and makes you feel um, a good, like your home is a good space. Lighting is very important as well. And again, light and light and bright. So will decluttering make you happy? Yes, in principle, because once you have little clutter, you have clarity. And once you have clarity, you're in a much better position to think more clearly and make better decisions. I know certainly it's helped in my life. So in other words, you can in fact declutter your mind, not just your physical space. So what are you waiting for? A new way of life awaits you. Let's get going. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry for the delay, Tracy. That was just fabulous. I couldn't, I couldn't unmute myself quick enough. That's really great. I wonder if uh, we go, if you stop share, that's it. Does anybody have any questions for Tracy? Bloss, do you want to unmute yourself? Yeah. Um, I am a massive fan of decluttering. And I think, um, like sort of lots of people, I, I mean, I have this, a strange upbringing. I moved every two years with my family because my dad was in the army. so. I had to chuck everything away a lot and I think my brother's gone one way and he hoards and I'm completely the opposite I just declutter all the time but of course I live with people <laughs> who don't necessarily share that mindset 
And I just wondered if you had any tips for finding that sort of compromise where they don't feel like they're being oppressed, <laughs> but I can also still feel like I'm keeping my space um, sort of sacred, which is how it feels, isn't it? You know. Mm. I think that's, a, I come across that quite a lot. Um, actually, I met a couple recently where he's very minimalist and she's a, a hoarder. I think it's about though, agreeing on a common ground where you can have both the space, like say for instance, the living room, you know, maybe that's the space where you both agree that it's clutter free because you're both going in there. But the person that has the, the clutter, they have their own space, a, a man cave, a woman cave, or whatever it is. But I think that's one of those discussions that you probably need to say, you know, is being open with them. So this is the way I like to have things. And this is the way, and you accept that's the way that they live their lives. But what you don't want to do is they probably don't want the way you live to intrude on their lives yeah. uh, more than you want theirs. So it's, 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 about, it's about agreeing some spaces, I would agree, in if you're all living together in a home. It's like, what areas do stay clutter-free? Um, yeah. What areas can you agree that it's a neutral space, if you like, really, where not one person or another um, take, takes over. Yeah. Um, yeah, I hope that's helped. Thank so. you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Bloss. Does anybody else have any questions or thoughts? There's lots of lovely comments in the chat. Uh, Nicola, do you want to unmute yourself? Hey, Tracy. Thanks so much Hi. for sharing that. I just wanted to share, actually, I'm actually living super, super duper minimalist at the moment. Um, it's only because I'm transitioning between countries. And you used the word expression early, mental declutter. And I think that's, for me, um, all my stuff's in storage so I'm living just out of suitcases and bits and pieces and it has been a real yeah. declutter in the mind you know I, I totally I totally get that in fact um so in 2017 on paper my life would have looked an absolute mess I I split from my husband I had to sell my shop I had in Highcliffe I sold my home and I went to live with a friend in her park home in Highcliffe <laughs> out of one suitcase and I remember thinking Jesus could it get any you know could it get any more shit excuse my friend <laughs> could it get more shit if it tried do you know what I mean like where's the woman that I was I had and everything and then I started to laugh because I actually really enjoyed it I suddenly thought I don't need all this stuff yeah. it's like as long as I got my makeup and my clothes I'm not <laughs> fun yeah. But on a desert island, as long as I got some nice dresses and some nice shoes, I'd be happy yeah. in a bit of liberty. Um, and um, it was really, like you just said, absolutely yeah. life-changing. I just suddenly thought, I feel liberated. Yeah. Everything was in store. I didn't miss anything. I didn't even remember what I had. Yeah. That's the other thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and yeah. I'm thinking, you know, I'm paying for storage, but I actually don't know what's in there now. <laughs> you know, because you're so far removed from it. Yeah. I'm thinking, do I actually need to keep all that stuff? Yeah. I, met this, um, I know this removal guy that I use quite a lot because I help some clients actually do the physical move and everything they have to move. And he said to me, he gets so many clients, they, he picks up their stuff, puts it in store, and he never, ever hears from them again. And they've got it in store. Yeah. And it's just gone. Gone. But they pay. They pay for it. Yeah. Never see them again. 20 years. Yeah. Well, well, I'm actually thinking maybe I'll go back, empty it when this lockdown is finished, get rid of the stuff and just minimise it even further. Yeah, that's, that's the challenge though, isn't it? I, I have got the classic boxes that in the cellar here that haven't been opened for 10 years. And of course, like lots of people in lockdown, we've taken the time to have a clear out. And I know I shouldn't open them. I know I should just take, give them to somebody like you and say either sell it, take it to a charity shop because the minute I open them, I'll be trying to find a space for things that I haven't used for 10 years and don't need. And they were a previous life. Yeah, that's, actually Jill, that's really interesting. You touched on that. So I was working with a client um, and um, I, I, it's a, it's a, I, you just touched on it. As I say, I made, I made the mistake of allowing her, <laughs> say allowing her. She had a box she hadn't opened in 15 years. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was the least of her worries. The whole house needed decluttering. And I made the mistake of saying, oh, what's in this box? And oh. she oh. And then I let her open it three hours later. Oh. And of course, she's paying for my time. And I'm not, 
I don't want to take the less money from people. Do you know what I mean? I want to come in and do a really, really good job and be in there in their faces as less time as possible. And it was all, everything she picked up. Oh, I got this in Peru, and that was. Oh no, I will keep it. And I felt bad that I didn't. <laughs> Probably right, Jill. Just, just take it away. Just well, that, that, that's always been a standing joke in our house. I say I'm going to clear something else, and I disappear up, and the next thing, there's stuff scattered all about the room, and I'm doing exactly as you say. Yeah. And just spend hours opening photo albums, old photo albums. We still, oh, nightmare. We've definitely got to come around, but we have got a session book for next week, which I'm very excited about. Yeah. So, does anybody else have any questions? Yes, Jean. Over to you. Thank you, everyone, for the questions. It's lovely. Sorry, I was just unmute myself. Uh, yeah, sorry, Tracy. I was just thinking, uh, as as people were uh, giving you some feedback, that um, uh, both in my uh, my personal contacts, my friends and family, and people I work with, um, it's quite interesting the decluttering thing because it's a bit of a chicken and egg thing. I find that sometimes, why do people have clutter? Because they have the emotional and uh, uh, psychological things going on. Um, but actually, just saying without trying to analyse that let's just declutter and give yourself a, a weekend off and get, get your office sorted out or something actually helps their emotional state as well. So um, yeah. it can I be quite a good quick fix, I find. I with people I we expand on that enough, but um, yeah, absolutely. The, the mindfulness, I talk about that. And I think I've done it myself during this lockdown. I think we've all had probably many meltdowns. I know I've had a, one or two. So I think you just kind of, what do you do? And I've just gone to a cupboard, <laughs> put some nice music on, taken it all out, cleaned it, tidied it, got rid of some stuff. And do you know how much better I felt after yeah. it? Just literally, it's, it's like, it is an actual mental health trick, a, a tool, a tool, if you like, and it's, you know, all the tools that we've got to help us. It can help us in that moment and bring a sense of calm. And like you just said, use it just as, come on, whatever's going on in life, let's just tidy this drawer, you know, let's get this done. And you just feel achieved. You normally feel tired, which is great because the tired, you feel calmer anyway. Um, it's about it, getting back control, I think. At least if you've got control over a drawer, then the whole rest of it, you know, yeah. is not quite so bad somehow, I think. Yeah, I think, I think definitely the losing of things. Um, I know when I was in, a, in my overwhelm thing, I mean, I say it's difficult, but I've just, I've always been, as I said, I've always been quite, organized but I think when you feel that your other elements in your life are out of control and I went through a phase of where's the keys where's the phone you know the absolute nightmare the, the unbelievable you know that would have put it in another handbag or something and it's it, it's distressing it makes you put stress on your own body anyway um and so yeah just having that like you said Jill just the, if it's just a drawer so I've got like a little pot on my hall table my keys are in there. That's where they stay. And I know that. And that makes me just feel calmer because I know when I get up in the morning, I'm not going to be hunt, hunt the house, you know. <laughs> yeah, we've got a, a key dish. Unfortunately, it's full of keys, most of which we don't use anymore, but I'm with you on that. <laughs> That's where you have to go around the house trying all the doors. Yes, I know. <laughs> Done that too. <laughs> that's yeah. brilliant. Tracy, that's, that's such a helpful session. Uh, are you okay to send me the slides so I can circulate them yes. to people. That would be wonderful, really yeah. great. Um, a last call then, ladies. Does anybody have any other, anything they wanted? Anne, yes. Just a quick question, Tracy. Does mm. your decluttering um, also include people out of your life apart from ex-husband? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that that sounds, nodding I vigorously do. there. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, I do. I think I'm very much about friendships and it's it's so important that everyone in your life makes you feel really really good there's no excuse to have anyone in your life that makes you feel crap and obviously you can work in an environment and maybe have some people but I think um, I remember again when I first came down and when I very first came down here I met some people that probably weren't for my best interest if I'm really honest you could honestly say they were the bad crowd but because I'm like I always say I'm a bit like a puppy. I go into a room full of people and I had no boundaries. And I just literally go, hello everybody, I'm your friend. And I don't even know anything about anybody. And within a month, they might be moving in. Do you know what I mean? It's like that, <laughs> come on in. And then you realize they're taking you down quite a bad path. Yeah. Um, and so, um, and the way I did that was, um, I'm still friends, I'm on Facebook. I've 
close off any new notifications so they can't see what I'm, what I'm putting out there. I don't see them anymore. It's not, a, it's not a judgmental thing about where they are in their lives. But I came to realize that every time I left them, um, I wasn't in a good place mentally. Mm -hmm. I always felt a bit crap, actually, to be fair. And I think that's something that um, it's very important. If you want to be the best version of you, it's hanging out with the really... The, the, what we are the sum total of the five people we spend the most time with. And I could honestly say, hand on heart, I haven't got a friend that I don't love to the end of the earth and back, and I would do anything for, you know. And um, that has made me feel so strong and supported um, throughout this, this last you know, few years of my life. Um, I feel really, you know, term that everyone uses blessed, but I really do. And I think in terms of decluttering friends, what I, what, I, what I today suggest is that you just make a distance, do you know what I mean? You know, like if you imagine you've got like a circle around you, you've got to think about that circle. Who do you want? I've learned this from CBT, by the way. Who do you want in that circle? I used to have everyone in that circle. Now the circle's expanded. I've got space around me, which makes me, helps me be me. Um, I've got my friends, but then anyone else that I've known, the acquaintance, everything, they're on the outside doesn't mean don't get on, doesn't mean we don't go out sometimes and social, but they're, they're more on the periphery and they're not so involved in my life. And it's a good, it's a good way to be actually. And I think recognizing those people that just have your best interests in, at heart, don't necessarily want to take you to where they may be. Um, and I think that's really interesting. And I really recognize how people speak to me now. And I know that I walk away and I go, how does that make me feel? Um, and recognizing that, um, it's not about being oversensitive either, because I'm not over, I've got, I work, you can't be oversensitive when you work for some of the bosses I've worked in the past. <laughs> yeah. Most, mostly men. They used to say, oh, yeah. darling, don't start crying. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so I think that's a, that's a really, really good question. But yes, absolutely. I think even with some clients, I've seen that some of the people they hang out with be not the best for them. So yeah. No, it's really good to know. And I think it, it makes it all the more important that we find our tribe. And yes, you know, this is this is our tribe, you know. Yeah, absolutely, women working together, supporting yeah. each other. Fantastic session, Tracy. Really practical and love the emotional side of it. I, I support people bereaved, and they often feel very guilty in letting yeah. go of possessions, and it's about timing sometimes. But they actually then feel really liberated once they're able to release something because they feel they're moving on. Yeah, I just, I won't hold the thing, but I just, I'm, I'm just working with a client now, I'm seeing her in a few weeks time and I know that she's struggling now, she really needs money and there's a lot of value in the house, there's a lot of possessions, but she feels guilty because of her husband's and he died eight years ago. But I said to her the other day, I said, we need to help your money, your money income right now, is your, is that not your most, and she said, yes it is, and I said, you mustn't feel guilty, I said, he would love you, he would love you still, I said, just ask him, she's very spiritual, I said, ask him, ask him if you can let go of those things now, because she's got value in there and he would want to see her in this situation. So yeah, fabulous, thank you. Brilliant, Tracy, thank you so much. Really inspirational, I feel very, very motivated. <laughs> uh, most people that know me well know I've got a very um, uh, black sense of humour and I am now looking at my mum's ashes in the corner of my room in a very pretty box only because I don't know what to do. You've got this coming to you, Tracy. Okay, ladies, it's time for our one-to-ones, getting to know each other. I'm going to open some breakout rooms which will randomly put you with people. Going, I'm afraid I've got to a client meeting in five minutes. So All I'm right, really Annette, going, that's absolutely, absolutely no problem. I shall. See you later, everybody. Love you to Bye, see you. Annette. Lovely Bye. to see Bye. you. Bye-bye.